Hello, everyone. I'm Barb Owen of HowToGetCreative.com. And I think I have a really fun technique to show you. At least I've had a lot of fun with it this week. Over at How to Get Creative, we have several different member levels. And one of them is the VIP member group. And every month we do a live class. I record a class for them. And then we also have a live show and share that we do together. And that is, that's my favorite thing because I get to see what everybody's working on. So <clears throat> in this last, um, I think it was last month, pardon my voice, it kind of goes in and out sometimes. I think it was this last month, one of our VIP members named Nancy uh, showed us this really fun little brush technique. And we're going to have a challenge in the group for people to make their brush, make a brush of some kind and then do something with it. So anyway, I just thought I would share the, uh, the concept with you because it's just, it's too much fun not to share. And thanks to Nancy for showing it to us, I can share it with you. So let me show you what they look like. These are little handmade brushes. And you can make them out of a variety of things. Actually, the sky is the limit. It's like, you know, what do you want to make it out of? So these two are made from Kids Fun Foam. And one of them is thicker than the other one. The white one, the material is actually thicker than the yellow one. And I, I didn't find that it made any difference. Now, if you went with another one, another fun foam that was really thick, it might make a difference, but I don't know. I haven't tried it. This one is made from a uh, coffee sleeve, you know, the little corrugated um, paper sleeve that you get on a cup of coffee from a takeout place. This one's actually the coffee cup itself. So this is... This was made from this, so this was actually from the cup. So I just cut off a section and made a brush out of it. So I tried that. Now, not everything that you do may work. This is a piece of this packing material that I I ordered something, and this came, you know, in the bag or in the box. So I thought, oh, that'll be a really fun brush. Well, I'm gonna have if it's gonna be usable at all. I'm gonna have to cut it down because it's too floppy. It doesn't want to. It doesn't give me the results I want. So anyway, that's the brush. So let's um, let's play with one. So all I did was take a piece of fun foam. This is kids foam, and this one happens to be I think it's two and a half inches wide. They're different. I mean, I did them all different widths. Like this one is I think was three inches this one was two inches so I thought oh, I'll just do one two and a half inches I don't know why just because <laughs> just just because so and I drew a line about three quarters of an inch away from one edge and this just happened to be the piece I had so I'll tell you how big it is um, it's it's nine and a half inches and it doesn't have to be any set um, set thing it's just like use what you have and then you just use a pair of scissors and cut I'm just cutting up to the line and it doesn't have to be exact and you know if you accidentally go wonky and cut off some of the you know cut off a couple of these it's not really going to matter but you do need a pair of scissors that's kind of sharp so that you can get in there and cut them. And I also found f for what I was doing, it didn't matter a whole lot how wide they were. You'll get, you'll catch a rhythm when you do stuff like this and you'll just go for it. And they'll, you'll be surprised at how much they're relatively the same in width. It does, I did find it helpful to have this line up here, which I just drew with a ballpoint pen. I did find that was handy so that I had a place to stop. So you just go until you run out of stuff. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's as hard as it gets. Then um, to put this together, hold it together, I'm going to use some duct tape. You could use a rubber band, but I'm just going to use a piece of duct tape. 
and um, it doesn't have to be really big either, really long. So maybe, I don't know, four or five inches long max. And then I just cut it and tear it. And then I tore it lengthwise also because I didn't need it to be, you know, super, super wide. It was a little easier to handle if it was a narrow width. So I'm just going to set those right here off the side of my table just for a minute. So it's fun foam and duct tape at this moment, you know, fun foam and duct tape. And then I did find that it was helpful for me to use a little bit of tacky glue to get started. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to grab a little tacky glue and I'm going to decide which end I want to start at. It really doesn't matter a whole lot. We'll start down here just because. So I just put a little bit of glue, a little tacky glue. And you don't even have to do that. I just found it was a little easier for me to kind of get it started. So I put, you know, a little bit of glue here. Not much. Like I said, I don't think you even have to do that, but. Okay, once that glue tacks up, which it will take a minute, it will stick to the fun foam, but it does take a minute for that glue to tack up. One of the things that Nancy told us when she was talking about how she had discovered, or how she'd been playing with these brushes, and the funny thing was, she said, she said, well, I'm sure you guys have all done this. And I'm like, I haven't done it. I don't know where I've been. I've probably been hiding under a rock someplace, but I'd never seen this. And I thought, this just, this looks like too much fun. So anyway, back to the brush. <laughs> okay. So I'm not sure that that's completely tacked up yet. But anyway, one of the things Nancy said to us was after she started the brush rolling one way and she rolled a couple times, then she flipped it over, which I thought was so interesting. She flipped it over and she started rolling the opposite direction. And um, she said that she found that that helped the center be more um, filled in. Okay, so she just started, and, it, and it's honestly, it's a little fiddly when you're first getting going. Okay, so I'm rolling backwards to what I was rolling to begin with. All right, so just keep rolling. And if you want to, you know, every so often you can put some, you know, you can put some glue in here. And that, as that tacks up, that just will help, you know, hold the whole business together. Okay, so you do want to kind of keep it even as much as you can so that your brush, this is the end that, that matters if it's kind of even. This, mat this end doesn't really matter a whole lot. And once you get it rolled up, like this and you want to roll it as tightly as you can and then try not to let go of it <laughs> there's your brush okay then just take one of those little strips of duct tape and roll it around your brush and because you've got because I had that line there I could follow it and you know how nicely it rolls makes absolutely no difference the tape I'm talking about and then I, because I split it in half, I just use both pieces of the duct tape. I just, you know, waste not, want not, right? And then I just took the, uh, my scissors and, you know, if I had excess tape, I just cut it off. So that is as hard as it gets. If I could get my scissors in here without them sticking to the duct tape, all right, let's go the other direction, see if we can do it. You know, it's only when you're trying to show somebody something that things don't want to cooperate. <clears throat> now, you could measure your duct tape exactly, and you could, you know, cut your strips so they were exactly the right width and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, <laughs> that's not happening in my world. Might be in yours, but it doesn't happen in mine. 
Then if you want to give this some extra security in here to keep it rolled, then you can just take your um, tacky glue and you can put some more glue on this end and then set it aside and let it dry. So anyway, that's, <clears throat> that's it. That's your brush. See? <clears throat> so there's all kinds of things you can do with that. I'm sure you can just use your imagination. Here's what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to use one of the mini jelly plates. <clears throat> so this is one of the um, set of three mini jelly plates. There, there's two different sets of them. And so this is one of the, this is the round one. And its dimension is three inches. And so that's the one that I'm using. Now what I'm going to to um, use this on is I'm going to use some paper that I have that is th their backgrounds that I did for something and I don't even know what this is it's probably acrylic paint washes but I'm not even sure what it is and I have a little tiny brayer and I have some duct or uh, some just some deli paper tissue paper or something that I can clean my brayer off with. Okay, so a tiny little jelly plate like this takes a tiny little amount of paint. I'm gonna use a couple of colors. So that is Americana Vivid Violet, and this one is Martha Stewart Crafts Multi-Surface multi Satin, and the color is Beach Glass. So I'm gonna just use a little bit of that. That's probably too much. So we'll just wipe off some of that. That's probably still too much. So just get rid of some of it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just blend those two colors together. They don't have to be super blendy. Doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna just clean off my brayer over here. And honestly, these are some of my favorite papers, these brayer papers. I love how those come out. And then I'm going to use my little hand, huh, handmade, homemade, whatever brush. And I'm going to put it on here and I'm going to twist it like so. And then I'm going to just twist, kind of go around the outside edge to disturb that paint. Okay, so it just gets a little, I don't want it too um, perfect out there. And then I just use a piece of paper and uh, clean off the brush you know because you want to keep the the bulk of the paint off but if you junk up your brush make another one you know <laughs> it's, it's okay and I have my jelly plate mounted on a piece of acrylic just a stamping block so I look at it you know kind of decide you know kind of where I want it doesn't really matter and then I just put it down and I stamp it right there on that background. Okay, that's it. Then pull it off. And voila, you have yourself a flower made from a, a brush that you made yourself. Now there's about, I think probably dozens of things that you can do with the same with this same brush that we just made with this one brush you can imagine if you did this little one and and made things with it or this one and made things with it how different you know the different effect you can get I'm going to set this off to the side and I'm going to just clean off the plate just a little bit not much just a little bit and um, I'm going to wipe it just a little bit with the paper towel just to get the the stuff off of it and I'm gonna switch cameras here just so you can see again and this time I'm gonna use um, some different colors because I'm gonna use a different background so this is a different background and these pieces I'm doing are four inches by five and a quarter so again these are papers that I created in uh, from various classes and things and uh, just you know I love having my own stuff love have that's one of the things I love to do on the website is to figure out different ways to create fabric 
and paper and put them together. I just, you know, I love that. Okay, so I'm using a little um, Americana citrus, citron green, a little white, a little yellow, just a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to brayer those together like so. Okay, so brayer them together and roll off the excess <clears throat> so that I clean off the brayer and make these cool papers. Okay, so here's our little plate, jelly plate. I'm going to go back to the same, I'm just going to go back to the same brush because I'm finding that this is my favorite one, to tell you the truth. And so I'm just going to twist it. And then I'm just going to kind of go around the edge following the twists. And I'm just going to disturb the paint all the way around. And then clean off my brush. Okay. And then I'm going to look at my little um, piece of card and figure out where I want to put it. It doesn't really matter. It really doesn't. We'll just do this one. And then just kind of look at where you want to place it. You know, does it matter to you? And then stamp. And we'll see how it comes out. The contrast is very helpful when you're doing these. Yeah, that turned out pretty well. So I ended up with pretty good contrast on that. So you can see the flower. Then to clean off your plate, you can just use that um, piece of scrap paper or cardstock. And you get some interesting uh, patterns on your cardstock. So if you do just a whole bunch of the the uh, clean off things on your cardstock, if I hadn't gooped it up by putting paint on it, you know, you could make another piece of paper. Anyway, okay, so back to, um, and then just clean off your, clean off your plate just by using a, a baby wipe or paper towel and water, that works well too. Okay, so you clean it off and then you decide what you want to do. So I'm going to show you what I've done with these little these little background things that I created. So I've got a bunch of different samples. I just made cards out of them because I really enjoy having cards to send out to people. And so, and I'm not a tremendous card maker. Let's be clear about that. <laughs> but I enjoy trying. Okay, so here is one of the backgrounds that um, I just showed you. So I used a one of the greens and I just painted with a brush. I just used a brush like this. And thin the paint a little bit. And I painted a stem. And I like the juxtaposition of this great big flower and this little bitty stem and little bitty leaves. I just think that's fun. And I painted some little tiny leaves. I let that dry. And then I went back with a gel pen I just used a black gel pen because it's what I had. This is a Jelly Roll. Uh, let's see if I can get it to show up. It's a Jelly Roll, black Jelly Roll pen. That's what I used. And just did a little bit of outlining. And so I outlined the stem, the leaves. I did a little sketchy outline around the flower. I used um, just a paintbrush and some, some acrylic paint and dotted in some uh, center dots like pollen dots. Around the edge I used a stamp. This is an old Stampin' Up stamp. And I used that and some um, ink. And I just did a little bit of stamping around the edge just to give it a little bit of a um, little bit of interest. I inked around the edge with the same color and then put it on a card base. This is a card base. These are pre-folded. I like to buy them that way. So I'm going to quickly give you a look at the other ones that I did. So similar, very similar to the first one. This time I added some white dots because it wasn't showing up. So I used some white dots that I added with the Uniball Signo pin. OK, 
Okay, so there's that one. Here's another one. This one, it has a very metallic background. This is a paste paper background, so it you have to kind of tilt it to really see the, um, the image on that one. If you get it straight on, it looks, you know, at some in some lights, in some positions, it kind of disappears. Here's another one. All of these are, again, are papers that are either left over from something or something that I hand created. This one I did roses. There are these little fantasy flowers using some of the different brushes. I used one of the fun foam brushes for the big one. I used one of these little ones for the smaller flowers and then I cut them out and you know just made an arrangement, drew on some stems with some paint. It's not my favorite one but you know it's okay. And this is another one I did um, lots of little, used the little bitty the little bitty brushes and just did lots of little twirly roses and um, painted on some stems and a bow and that was that. So how fun is that? I mean really you need to get yourself some fun foam and you need to make yourself some brushes if you like this kind of stuff. I think it's a lot of fun you know because it's just it's just fantasy and play. So come on over to how to get creative and uh, check us out and if you're interested in those live classes, the VIP group is where those always happen. And they happen the first Saturday of the month. So come over, check us out. The links are in the description box below the video. So anyway, um, that's it. So thank you, Nancy, so much for sharing that idea with us. Remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. And I'll see you again next time.